Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to look at value-added tax. Now, this is a, a last portion as far as uh, um, notes are concerned. Uh, so, this is uh, very uh, important as far as uh, F6 is concerned and both P6 is concerned. Now, this lecture is both relevant to F6 and P6. If you're watching it for F6, uh, that is uh, new to you and not totally new, but uh, uh, most of the bits and pieces will be new to you. Although if you're watching this lecture for P6, then uh, if you have passed F6, you have already seen this lecture at uh, F6, so it is a revision of F6. All right? Now, value-added tax. Now, if you uh, remember from your earlier studies at uh, paper F3, which was financial accounting, or you might have seen any, uh, at any other paper as well, uh, you have seen some of the value-added tax. Now, how to calculate the value-added tax? We know what value-added tax is. We have to pay on uh, we have to pay uh, some tax on some uh, some taxable supplies. All right. Say for example, if you go to a petrol pump, uh, you pay something on top of uh, fuel price that is value added tax. So you might have to pay on books as well, but you could be exempt. We'll see in a minute. Now what we do is as a businesses uh, we also uh, we as a businesses have to pay value added tax as well. Now if I am a business, I am making some taxable supplies assuming I am making taxable supplies. Uh, taxable supplies means I am selling something which is taxable for value to tax purposes. So if I am making some taxable supplies, if I am selling something which is taxable to value the tax, so I will have to charge value to tax. Now when I charge value to tax, I am not charging, I will not keep that money in my own pocket. I will have to then uh, pay to HMRC. Now when I am so when I'm selling the stuff, say for example, if I am selling, uh, I'm selling some cars, uh, for example, or if I am selling fuel, I have a petrol pump. I am se selling fuel. Now I am selling fuel at the rate of one pound, but I am ch charging twenty percent VAT on it, so I will charge one pound twenty. Now I'm charging one pound twenty, but only one pound is coming in my pocket, and twenty pence is going to pocket of the HMRC. Likewise, if I'm doing some purchases, if I'm doing some purchases uh, and then purchases are chargeable to value added tax, if they are, then if they are chargeable to value added tax, then I am paying for them goods and services, but I am paying for value added tax as well. Now, when I buy something, I am paying value added tax. When I'm selling something, I am paying value added tax. Now, when I go to HMRC, HMRC says, uh, al although you have collected some value added tax, but you have paid some value added tax as well. Now tell me how much is the net amount that you have to pay or whether HMRC has to pay. So that is called a uh, net amount. Now how do we do it as a businesses? We call on uh, tax which we charge on sales is called output tax. And uh, one which we pay on our purchases is called input tax. So we take output tax and we deduct input tax out of that, whatever the net amount is, that is the amount either we have to pay to HMRC, right? If we, it is more than that, if it is in positive figures, we will have to pay to HMRC. If it is in negative figures, uh, HMRC has to pay us, so it is repayable. HMRC has to pay us back. If we have paid more in input tax, so if we have paid more in purchases and uh, we have collected less tax on output tax, then we will have to collect it. We'll, uh, HMRC has to repay uh, to us. All right. That is the normal calculation which you have seen at F3 as well. So that is the way to calculate value added tax. Another interesting thing was another thing which you have seen at F6. And if you are uh, if you are watching it for P6, and if you are watching it for F6, you have seen it F3 level. Uh, the thing was we take the value of uh, we, we take the value of uh, the asset, say for example it was 100 pounds and uh, the tax rate was, VAT rate was 20% on that. So that is the VAT rate, that is the value of the asset. So what would be the total amount? That is the total amount which is 120 pounds. Likewise, rate of tax is 20%, rate of VAT is 20%. If someone gives you total value, if it says total value is 120 pounds and 20% is VAT rate, could you please tell me what would be the amount excluding VAT? What would be the amount of uh, value of value of good 
value of asset excluding that. How can we do it? We'll have to do 120, which is the value multiplied by 100 over 120 because we know 20% is the tax. So we'll do like that and we know uh, that would be price of our good, good or service, whichever it is. In other case, if they give you price of uh, a good, uh, 120 pounds, so it is including tax, could you please tell me, uh, and the rate of tax is 20%, could you please tell me how much was the tax on that? So simple is that, we take 120 multiplied by 20 and divided by 120, which would come as, uh, which would give us 20 pounds. So that is, a, uh, that is a, a rate of tax on value added tax. All right, now this was simple calculation, which you have already seen at F6, and uh, um, if you are watching it for P6, and you have already seen at uh, F3 level, which is financial accounting, so this is just a basic level. I was just telling you, I was just showing you how to calculate value of the tax. It if gives you a total figure, uh, including value of the tax, and it gives you total figure excluding value of the tax, so th that you can calculate what the tax is if they give you the percentage of that. All right? Now, value of the tax is always uh, uh, value of the tax is always calculated after the discounts. Now, there are two types of discount. One is trade discount, and another one is cash discount. Now, although we do not consider trade discount for value to tax, but we consider a cash discount for value to tax. So if you have asked someone to pay you on time, and if they pay you on time, and we'll have to take the cash discount out of that, and we will have to and then uh, calculate, the, uh, calculate the value to tax on the net amount after discount. All right. So these were just some basics. Now, who shall pay tax? Who shall pay value to tax? Is everybody has to pay? Does everybody has to pay tax? As a business, I am as a business. Do I have to charge value tax from everyone? If I am registered for value tax purposes, then definitely I am going to charge value tax. Now, do I need to register for value tax? Yes, there is some threshold. So if I re if my taxable supplies are up to that limit, then I have to. I must register for value tax. But is it compulsion? Do I have to? Uh, do I have to register for val value to tax if I do not reach that limit? No, there is no compulsion, but I can register even if I do not reach that limit. The limit is £82,000 for a year. Now, normal limit is £82,000. Now, if you do not reach that limit, you can still register as value to tax. You can still register your business for value to tax purposes. Now, why would someone uh, register themselves at, for value to tax purposes? when they have not reached the limit. Why would someone do that? Now, I hope you would appreciate the fact that every business has some selling and everyone is purchasing as well at the same time. Now, although their sales is, you know, they're not charging VAT on that because they're not registered, but they're paying some VAT on purchases. They're paying substantial amount of VAT on purchases. Now, until they are registered for VAT, they cannot recover value tax. So when they will be registered for value tax, then they will be able to recover the tax which they are paying on the purchases. Now, the reason, the main reason for getting themselves registered, so getting the register, uh, getting the business registered for value tax before reaching the threshold is because they are paying value tax on the uh, purchases so that they cannot recover it until that they, they get registered. So that's the reason they normally get registered in order to recover the value tax. Now, as far as value tax is concerned, there are th three types of supplies for value tax purposes. One is a standard rated supply, and the, uh, another one is zero rated supply, and third one is exempt supplies. Now, supplies means uh, giving the supply of service or providing the goods. All right. Now, there are three types of supplies. Now, exempt supplies are the supplies on which you do not have to pay any tax, value tax. Excuse me. You do not have to pay any tax and you do not have to charge any tax if we look from the business perspective. Zero rated supplies are the supplies on which you have to charge tax at the rate of 0%. All right? You, do, you cannot, what the student does is normally they confuse between the exempt supplies and the zero rated, zero rated supplies. Now they are not the same thing when examiner says zero rated supplies you will have to show it by calculation so whatever the amount is multiplied by zero percent all right now they are different things now let's move to our notes then uh, i will share the screen with you 
just bear me one second actually uh, just bear me one second it is page uh, yeah here you go I've shared the screen with you it is page 63 of the notes as you can see on your notes uh, on your screen as well page 63 It says value tax and there are three types of supplies. The first one is standard rated supplies, the second one is zero rated and the third one is exempt supplies. Now let's look at the exempt supplies first of all and what are the exempt supplies on which do we do not have to pay any tax. Now these include bank services, insurance, health services, non-profit organizations, non-profit education basically and betting and gambling. So on these we do not have to pay any tax and we do not have to charge any tax so these are exempt supplies if we are dealing with them and we cannot register for value added tax we cannot register ourselves for the value added tax now then comes the zero rated supplies now these are non luxury food books sewage and water services drugs and medicine children's clothes and footwear these are the industries on which you have to charge tax at the rate of 0% now why what is the difference between exempt and zero rated supplies is uh, in exempt in exempt supplies you cannot register yourself for value added tax in zero rated supplies you can do that and you can recover value added tax as well now although in zero rated supplies you will not be charging value added tax but you might be paying value added tax so then you can recover value added tax so that's why you can register yourself for value added tax in zero rated supplies All right then comes the standard rated which is 20% on most goods and services. Now what is the way to calculate the value tax? I have just showed you on the board and it is exactly the same thing which is done in the notes. And be just beneath that it shows you the value of supplies so it is inclusive and exclusive things which I have already shown you on the board. Then comes the registration. Now there are three tests, uh, sorry two tests for compulsory, compulsory registration when someone need to register for uh, value tax compulsory. First one is historic test. Now historic is previous one. So we'll have to look at the history. So previous 12 months. Now in the previous 12 months, if uh, taxable supplies is exceeding 82,000 pounds, then you will have to, you must, you must register for value tax. And the next one is future test. It says a person is liable to be registered anytime if there is a reasonable grounds for believing that the taxable supplies will exceed 82,000 pounds in the coming 30 days. Now we'll have to see 12 months every 12 uh, and so we will have to check every month that in the next 12 months whether we will be making good money whether we will be reaching the 82,000 pounds limit if we do that then we will have to uh, register ourselves for value added tax then comes the voluntary registration a person may decide to become registered even if his taxable uh, turnover falls below the registration limit to uh, uh, it will be advantageous to to a trader as only a registered person can recover the value tax so voluntary registration the main reason to register one the main register businesses register themselves for value tax main reason for that is because they want to recover the value tax they have paid on the purchases after that comes the group registration now more than one company if they are both dealing with taxable supplies so they want to register uh, for value tax they can make a group registration so when they make a group registration there are some benefits of that now what are the effects and advantages they are given beneath that but who can make the group one uh, so it says that uh, two or more companies are eligible to be treated as member of the group provided each of them is established in the UK and one of them control each of the other or one person or individual controls all of them or two persons carrying on partnership carrying on business in partnership controls all of them so these are the conditions they can make the group as far as value added tax is concerned what would be the effect and advantages each value added tax group must appoint a representative member which must be a, which must account for the group's output VAT and input tax what they do is that when they make a group they must appoint one group member so there will be one company who will be responsible for value tax and 
uh, uh, output and input value tax. Thus simplifying the value tax, value accounting and allowing payments and repayments of VAT to be netted off. So when one person would be responsible, so it will be easier uh, for them. However, it could be difficult as well. You know, they will have to collect uh, the only person, only uh, company will be, uh, the responsible company will be just one company. So the group could be very, very big group. So if it is a very, very massive group, then they will have to collect the information from all of the departments. So it is a uh, little hectic as well. And after that it says any supply of goods or services by a member of the group to another group member will be uh, outside the value tax. So it will be disregarded for value tax. So if one group com uh, member company transfer goods to another group member company, so they will not charge any value tax. Any application to create, terminate, add or to remove company from value tax may be made at any time. You can add or remove any company you want, any time you want. Then comes the uh, deed registration. Now there are compulsory deed registration when HMRC believes that you are not making any taxable supplies, then you must deregister from value tax. Voluntary deregistration, so if you can make HMRC satisfy that you are not making any taxable supplies, then you can deregister as well. Now there is a limit for that. If you are uh, not exceeding 80,000 pounds, your taxable supplies are not exceeding 80,000 pounds, then you can voluntarily deregister. What would be the consequences of deregistration? Please make sure you rec uh, mark it as important. This is very, very important. Now, when you have registered your business for quite a long time, or even one year, or even less than that, then after re registering, you say to HMRC, I want to deregister. If you do that, then there is a penalty and there is a charge. What is that penalty? Uh, you will have to pay value tax on all the, uh, uh, all the value tax which you have already claimed. Now, whatever you have purchased, you have claimed that value tax, you will have to repay to HMRC. However, if it is less than £1,000, you do not have to do that. It says on deregistration, value tax is chargeable on all stocks and capital assets in the business on which input tax uh, was claimed. If chargeable value tax is £1,000 or less than that, it cannot be, uh, it need not be paid. This rule does not apply if the business is sold as going concern. So if you have sold the business as going concern, if you sold this business and someone else is running this business as a going concern, uh, then you do not have to, you do not have to pay that. After that, it comes that VAT periods. Now, what is the VAT period? It is normally a quarter. So please make sure you read that. It is normally a quarter. It says, uh, is a period covered by the VAT return is usually three calendar months, which is quarter, and VAT return along with the payments must be submitted and VAT must be paid electronically within one month and seven days uh, after the end of the VAT period. And after that, it says certain business businesses may submit an annual VAT return uh, under the annual accounting scheme. See later. Now, although you have to submit a VAT return every quarter and you have to pay the VAT one month and seven days after that, but you can make a you can join a scheme if you join that specific scheme. Excuse me, if you join that specific scheme, then you will only have to pay one tax, uh, one uh, return, which is which is a scheme. The scheme is called annual accounting scheme. Now let's look at this scheme. Let's go down. On page 69, there are three schemes. Annual accounting scheme. Now let's look at the annual accounting scheme. What is that? Now what did I say? <coughs> Excuse me. I said that normally what we have to do is in, in, in value tax, we have to submit our uh, value tax every quarter. However, if you join a scheme, which is annual accounting scheme, then you will only have to submit one VAT return annually. And that is the benefit of this scheme. But who can join this scheme? There are some conditions. An annual sc accounting scheme is available whereby a single VAT return is filed for a 12 months period. Normally the accounting period of the business, the annual return must be filed within two months of the end of the return period. Normally nine months on account. Uh, each calculated on 10 months of the previous year's net VAT liability. So you'll have to pay 10% uh, of the previous mm, VAT liability are made at the end of the f uh, months 4 to 12. So these will be made from months 4 to 12. So you'll have to make some installments. The balance and payment or repayment is made when the return is filed. A trader can join the scheme if his taxable turnover 
uh, for the 12 months starting on the day of the application to join the scheme is not expected to be uh, exceed 1.35 million. So this is the limit. So if your taxable supplies are not exceeding 1.35 million, then you can join the scheme. And the, if the taxable supplies is exceeding 1.6 million, you must yeah, you must exit this scheme. So you must leave this scheme. If you are after joining this scheme, if you have exceeded this limit, you must leave this scheme. After annual accounting scheme, there is another scheme which is cash accounting scheme. Now the limit to join this scheme is exactly the same for annual accounting scheme. So the taxable turn turnover not exceeding 1.35 million, you can join it and you must leave this scheme if you have reached 1.6 million, it is exactly the same. So the limits are exactly the same of annual accounting scheme and cash accounting scheme, but the benefits are different. What are the benefits of cash accounting scheme? It says according to the scheme, the VAT is accounted for on the basis of cash receipts and payments. Now how we normally calculate, how we normally uh, account for VAT is on the basis of accrual concept. But in cash accounting scheme, we will uh, use the cash basis, so cash receipts and payments rather than basis of invoices issued and received. All right. So therefore, automatic bad debt relief. So the main benefit of this scheme is that when you are calculating, when you are considering the VAT on the basis of cash receipts and cash payments, then you will automatically receive the bad debts re relief because bad debts you will just take off the bad debts, then you will have to pay value tax. So you will get the automatic bad debt relief in cash accounting scheme that is main benefit of this these three schemes are very very important as far as exam is concerned please make sure you learn them and the last scheme is called flat rate scheme now if you know that what is the rate of value to tax the rate of value to tax is 20 percent but however you can pay less value to tax in one scheme which is called flat rate scheme now in flat rate scheme you might be able to if you are eligible if you join the scheme you will have to pay less tax a uh, less uh, percentage of tax however there are some disadvantages of this scheme as well you cannot claim you cannot claim value to tax on your purchases so what would be the rate in this scheme the scheme uh, the rate of flat uh, rate is flat rate so it will be straight rate it will be given to you in the question if examiner asks you a numeric question it will tell you that flat rate is that percent. However, a flat rate will vary industry to industry. So it will be different for accountancy and practice. It will be different for foods. It will be different for entertainment. So it varies for industries. You can check the flat rate, uh, flat rates of different industries on the gov.uk website, uh, but it varies. They are different. You do not have to worry about it. Examiner will tell you if he asks the question, examiner will tell you in the question that what is the rate of the industry which he is asking. But flat rate scheme, you there are different things that uh, you can join this scheme. Uh, there is limit. Uh, if your taxable supplies are 150,000 pounds or less than that, you can join this scheme. And if you are exceeding 230,000 pounds, then you must leave this scheme. Uh, the benefit of this that uh, be the benefit of this scheme is that you will have to pay flat rate of VAT. So you will not have to calculate output tax and input tax and deduct that. You do not have to do that. Uh, and uh, disadvantage is you, d you will not be able to claim value to tax. Now another benefit is that if you are new to this scheme, if you have joined, if you have just joined this scheme, uh, in the first year of joining this scheme, you will get 1% reduction in the flat rate as well. So please make sure you read it. It says uh, flat rate scheme, sales uh, VAT inclusive multiplied by uh, VAT, uh, sales is VAT inclusive. So will take the sales which is VAT inclusive price multiplied by the flat rate which will be VAT paid to HMRC. So you will not be able to recover it. You will just be paying to HMRC which would be the flat rate. However, while calculating the VAT in under the flat rate scheme, you will be taking the value of the goods including 20% VAT. So for example, if your, uh, if your, um, if your sales are 100 pounds, you will have to add 20% into it, so that would be 120 pounds, and you then have to multiply it by the, by the flat rate. Now say for example flat rate was 5%, then the VAT which will have to pay to HMRC would be how much? 6 pounds. That would be the amount which will be paid to HMRC. So that is the way to calculate the, uh, that is the way to calculate the uh, VAT under the flat rate scheme.
All right, so you might not be able to see that yet because I've shared the screen, but when I will cancel the sh cancel sharing the screen, then you can just check it. So when calculating value of tax under the flat rate scheme, just take the net amount, then add the standard rate of VAT, which is 20%, then multiply it by the um, flat rate, which in my example was 5%. All right, so an optional flat rate scheme is, has been introduced and aimed at simplifying the way in which the small businesses calculate their VAT liability. To calculate the VAT liability, simply apply the flat rate uh, percentage total turnover. Uh, the percentage will depend on the trade sector in which the business falls. No input VAT is repaid. To join the scheme, the business must have taxable supplies up to £150,000. After joining the scheme, the turnover, if the turnover exceeds £230,000, then must, the business must leave the scheme. Note, 1% reduction uh, of the flat rate can be made by a business in the first year of registration. So that is a benefit. If you are new to this scheme, you can get the benefit in the first year of registration. All right. The, the next point is that refunds. Uh, hang on, let me check. Yeah, refunds of overpay tax. Uh, there is four year time limit on the right to claim uh, overpaid VAT. So if you have, you have overpaid some VAT, you have four years to claim value tax which you have overpaid. All right. And uh, what is the tax point? The tax point of each supply is deemed date of supply. So uh, the tax point determines the value, value added tax period in which the output tax. The tax point basically means that when we consider the tax point, when we have transferred some asset or when we have received the receipt of what we have, um, what we have sold. So this tells you what will be the tax point. It is important for F6 point of view. It is not important for P6 point of view. Please make sure you read it. It is very easy and theory. Next, it is VAT records. Now, how does the VAT invoice looks like? Uh, please make sure you read it. It is very, very important for uh, F6. Please make sure you read it because examiner has examined quite few times in the past F6 exams how the value the tax invoice looks like. However, it is not important for P6 point of view. Next is the treatment of discounts, how to do the treatments. So we'll have to take the discounts, then we'll have to take the value tax I have already mentioned. Now, relief for bad debts. Normally, value tax output is accounted for when an invoice is issued. If the sales becomes a bad, bad debt, then the seller has paid VAT to HMRC and uh, never recover this from the customer. The position is addressed by the seller being able to reclaim a value tax bad debt relief provided after at least six months has been elapsed. Now, in this case, it's saying uh, that when you have sold an asset to when you have sold an asset, and uh, that asset you have sold is is on credit. So if you have sold the asset, but the customer has said that I will pay you later, but the customer did not pay you. However, what you did is you have calculated VAT on that, and you have paid that VAT to HMRC. Now you can claim that VAT from HMRC because customer did not pay you anyway, the customer was bad debt, you can claim from HMRC. But how can you claim? You can claim until at least seven, uh, at least six months has been elapsed since the payment from the debt was due and the debt has been written off in the seller's books. All right. Now the next important point is uh, imports, exports, acquisition and dispatches. Now for European Union purposes, now there is an agreement between European Union and UK, although now UK, is, uh, UK has left the European Union after Brexit, which was a blunder, I would say. Uh, anyway, it is not a political class. So after, uh, although UK has left the European Union, but uh, it is still some time left before it is enforced, before it is uh, enforced into the law. So uh, there is an agreement between the European Union and UK, which says that there will be one uniform way to calculate the value of tax. So it is exactly the same in the UK, it will be exactly the same in European Union. So what would happen then uh, when we transfer some goods and uh, when we transfer some goods from here, from London to Paris, say for example. So although we are transferring from UK to Europe, but there is isn't because of that agreement, uh, then we will get some reliefs. So we will not, we, we might not have to pay value tax on that all right 
So let's see in this uh, notes, it says imports, exports, acquisition and dispatches. Now for that, ex what is export means? Export refers to the goods sold countries outside the UK. Import means goods purchased uh, with the countries outside the UK. Now the term dispatches means when you sell the goods within the U European Union uh, and uh, when you buy the goods when you buy the goods uh, from the uh, countries in the European Union then it would be considered as acquisition when you sell the goods outside European Union it would be export when you buy the goods outside European Union it would be imports excuse me now when you export when you export so when you are selling the goods outside European Union and that would be treated as zero duty supply so although the VAT would be zero uh, but you will have to account it for according to the according to the rate given which is zero percent because it is zero rated supply all right uh, when you import some goods out of the uh, when you import some goods importing means when you buy something out of the European Union so they, these are taxed at a standard rate or zero rated uh, as it would have been uh, in the UK so you will take the normal rate which would be normal rate in the UK so we now know about the exports and imports so exports would be zero rated now why the exports are zero rated because every government want to increase the exports so exports are good for economic point of view so that's why UK government has said when you export something out of the European Union we won't charge any tax so it would be zero percent however when you import that we would charge at the rate of standard rate when it comes to dispatches now dispatches means when you sell goods to European Union these are taxed at the rate of zero rated, zero rated supply now dispatches are again because we are selling something these are zero rated government wanted to do that government want you to do it more so that's why they are saying we will charge zero rated zero rate tax and when you do some acquisition when you do some acquisition it says refers to goods purchased from countries in the European Union these are taxed at the as both output VAT and input VAT at the standard rate or zero rated as it would have been taxed in the UK as same amount is to be written off in both output tax and input tax and the net amount is zero now what when you buy some goods out of the uh, when you got, buy some goods within the European Union countries say for example from Germany when you buy some goods from the Germany then what you will have to do is you'll have to take you'll have to charge VAT when they arrive uh, in the UK uh, you'll have to charge VAT on that but you'll have to put the same amount in the uh, output VAT and input VAT so you'll take the same amount and the net amount is going to be zero net effect is going to be zero so when you buy the goods from the European Union uh, you will take input VAT and you will take output VAT but the amount written in both of the sections would be exactly the same so the net amount is uh, net uh, effect is going to be zero all right so that I would say is end of this chapter I would just wind up this chapter here uh, and uh, we will continue our value the tax journey in the next lecture uh, so that is end of this lecture of value tax all right now you can see here on the board uh, which is uh, which I have mentioned you can see here on the board uh, 100 plus 20 uh, which I showed you for flat rate scheme so you can just see on the board as well all right that's it for now and I will see you in the next lecture with uh, more of the value added tax all right Till then, goodbye.